Uh, okay, so there is one other thing I want to make, say, which is that um, this is about partitioning. This, this, so this partitioning actually brings out the core structure of the matrix and uh, what the singular value decomposition allows you to do is to partition matrices uh, as I'm going to tell you now. Uh, so here, here it is. So again, A is in C to the M by N and uh, has, so, so, so suppose this has R, which is at most P defined to be min of M N non-zero singular values. And say P minus R zero singular values. So we'll use the notation Sigma one greater than or equal to Sigma R which is greater than sigma r plus one, which is equal to all the other singular values, sigma p equal to zero. Then I can write, so since u is unitary, u Hermitian a v equals sigma can be written as, this is equal to u sigma v Hermitian, which I can partition like this u1, u2, where this is the first r columns, this is the next m minus r columns, and here I have, say, sigma tilde, or d as I called it in the, stating the theorem, 0, 0. This is overall an m by n matrix, and this itself is r cross r, and V1 Hermitian, V2 Hermitian, and this has the first R rows and this has the next N minus R rows. Okay, we'll call this form star, where sigma tilde is equal to a diagonal matrix containing sigma 1 through sigma R on the diagonal. Okay, so this allows you to partition the singular value decomposition like this into blocks. And what this partitioning does is it, it reveals a lot of structure in this matrix. So first of all, it shows that the rank of A is exactly equal to R. Okay, and um, you can write A as so if I do this multiplication here, I'll get sigma tilde V1 Hermitian, and then this whole thing multiplies zero down, uh, down here. And so I can write this like this, U1, U2, sigma tilde. So only V1 Hermitian is of size R, that only multiplies this, whereas this doesn't, uh, 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 this is just multiplying the, if, you, if I take a particular column here, the entries in V2 Hermitian are all multiplying zeros here, so they don't contribute to anything. So this can be written as this times V1 Hermitian, and then down here I'll have only zeros. And this itself is multiplying U2 here, so this doesn't contribute anything. So I can write this as U1 sigma tilde V1 Hermitian. And this is called the economy SVD. because this thing here is now an R cross R matrix. And this is of M by R and this is R by N. And so I can, I can see that, I see that now that A is equal to oops, U1 times the matrix B, where B is sigma tilde times V1. 
So what that means is that the ith column of A is a linear combination of the R columns of U1 with coefficients given by the ith uh, column of B. So that ith column of B gives me the ith the i column of B gives the coefficients with which I should combine the columns of U1 to get the i column of A. So, and uh, this sigma tilde, of course, is diagonal with non-zero entries. And so it has linearly independent columns. And V1 Hermitian has linearly independent rows. And so sigma tilde V1, or this matrix B, has linearly independent rows. And so what this means is that uh, A has exactly R linearly independent columns, and that's why the rank of A equals R. The second property is that the null space of A is the same as the uh, span of the columns of V2. Okay, and further, V2 is a basis for the null space of A. So null space of A is the set of all vectors x such that Ax equals 0. x Now if x is in the span of v2, then um, I can write x to be equal to v2 times c, where c is in some, or I should to be more careful. n minus r. OK, so it's in the span of v2. Now, V1 is perpendicular to V2 because the columns of V form an orthonormal uh, set. It, the matrix V itself is a unitary matrix. So, V1 is perpendicular to V2. <coughs> and V2 trans uh, Hermitian V2 is the identity matrix of size N minus R. Okay, so then what I have from this is that if I take AX, this is equal to u1 u2 times sigma tilde 0 0 0 times v1 hermitian v2 hermitian times v2 c now v1 hermitian v2 is 0 v2 hermitian v2 is the identity matrix but then this is only going to multiply these zero entries here and so what I'll be left with is u1 u2 times sigma tilde 0 0 0 and if I take this product first I get 0 v2 Hermitian v2 is the identity matrix so I'll get c down here and so now if I expand this out I'll get 0 times sigma tilde 0 times c and then zeros down here so this whole thing becomes equal to the zero vector so of V2 is a subset of the null space of A. So any vector that belongs to span of V2 satisfies Ax equals 0. So it is a subset of the null space of A. However, if X contains components of V1, of V1, that is to say that uh, if the projection of X onto span of V1 is non-zero, then um, AX cannot be equal to zero by this equation itself, because if, 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 if it has some component of V1, then V1 Hermitian times that will be a non-zero quantity. So I'll get a non-zero quantity up here, and that's multiplying a non-zero sigma tilde, which is in turn multiplying a non-zero u1 okay, by the above equation itself. 
and uh, v1 v2 form a complete basis for r to the for c to the n together they span c to the n which implies that v2 is a basis for the null space of a so we can similarly say many more things like um, the uh, range space of a is the range space of u1 the range space of a hermitian is the range space of v1 and um, the orthogonal complement of the range space of a which is equal to the null space of a hermitian is equal to the range space of u2 okay and uh, and so on and we will see some some more properties okay so uh, we're out of time so more properties okay so we'll see that in the next class so that's all i have for today um, we'll continue again on wednesday